Hello there, David Thompson here from the world of tech.net with a review and overview of a service called Boxy. This video is sponsored by mobilefun.co.uk, the one central place where you can get your mobile accessories at a competitive price. So, basically what Boxy is, it's a multimedia, pretty much viewing and sharing platform. And when I say platform, yes, it's you pr could probably compare this to the Apple TV, it's that sort of thing, a home media centre, home sharing centre, but it's a lot better than Windows Movie, Windows home sharing, and all that other stuff like front row, etc. All that box needs is one box, but the thing is, you can buy their box and plug it into your TV, or you can actually install some software on your computer and use that instead. And as you see, it says you can make one, or you can buy a boxy. If you wanted to look at buying the Boxy, it is quite a steep price here, it is £166, D-Link Boxy Box for Media Player, but it is of what you could say a pretty much high quality build, as I will explain about the operating system in a minute. If we just head back over to their website, it does actually state when you click buy a Boxy TV, it will tell you how much money you actually save using one of these things. And it says compared to Apple TV, compared to Google TV, compared to Roku, and then it'll show you all the options out there. But if, as you see here, TV shows, movies, applications, you can watch things later, you've got social sharing on there, and you've also got personal file access. And the thing is, they say that with Boxy Live TV, they will save you money. Yes, they will save you money. So here, it says $100, well I spend probably about $60 per month on the network, well the TV network here, and it says in a year you would save $720 and etc. And then it's quite a promotion thing there, but you will save money with this, and I quite like it to be honest. And you can get real TV on it, you can get live local television. So that's Boxy Live TV on their website. If we now go on Boxy for iPad, you can even get this platform for the iPad, as you will see later on as when I do the review of the iPad platform. But for now, if we just head over and take a look at it, I am currently running it on a Mac, and I've got the feeling that you will need an okay graphics card to run this. If you've got a very, very old computer, this isn't going to run very smoothly, as you see here. I have indeed created a Boxy account, and as you see there, it says David Thompson. So this is the interface you would have on your TV. I really like this because you can have it on your computer, you can have it on your TV, you can have it on your iPad, and you can have it on your iPhone. You can have it on all them devices, so it's one pretty much universal application which you will find everywhere if you implemented it on your home network. Here we have friends, this is the first thing which you can see. And in here, you get media shared by friends, so you can connect it to your Facebook account, and from your Facebook account, if someone shares a video, it will show up on there. And that's great if you want to go, hey look, my friend shared this. So that's good. It would be even better if they integrated actual social media networking. However, you can actually use the web app for that. There is a watch later list, and you can add clips, shows and movies onto your watch later list, indeed. And as you see, well you can't see, but I am controlling this all with my keyboard. You cannot use your mouse to control this, it's all done via my wireless keyboard here. So I'm using the left and right arrow keys, I'm using the exit key to get this option menu up, and the arrow keys to navigate around it. So when you press exit, you actually get options, and you can control all the options on here. So system, parental controls, general media, file source, and network settings. And as you see here, it is quite detailed over the control you have over it. So you have the utmost quite a lot of control. You can change the, the resolution here, which I'm going to change back to window there. So if your computer plugged into your TV, you can change all that stuff. So yes, that that's, that's pretty much the settings, etc. Now if we go into shows, this is one of the first main features of this. When we go into shows, we click enter, and here we get a whole range of shows. The thing is, I'm in the UK, it takes things from YouTube, it takes things from BBC iPlayer, it takes things from 
um, five catch up, channel four, all these different channels. Here we've got Friends, that's a recognisable one, Top Gear, Doctor Who, and their Mel and the BBC Medieval series. So, it's got quite a lot, and it's got things like Techzilla, Frozen Planet, Techzilla, which is indeed from Revision 3, Geek Beat TV from Revision 3 as well, App Judgment, Hack 5, so it's pretty much aimed at people who watch a lot of tech content, people who are used to online content, I wouldn't say so much people who watch TV content, however there is some children friendly stuff like Arthur, I've heard of that before, and of course Thomas the Tank Engine there, and it all streams pretty well, so if we click enter on this, we get a whole list of all the different episodes, which easy children could use this interface. If we click episode 20, and as you see, I have already watched parts of this as I was testing it out earlier. It loads nice and fast, and unfortunately, this is one of the problems I had. It did take me onto the Channel 5 website. It would be nice if it integrated it right into there. And I'm currently controlling this mouse with the keyboard, which gets quite irritating. So if you're going to use it with your TV, you might just want to get some sort of laser controlled remote for your computer and infrared remote. So as you see here, it plays pretty smoothly, well, absolutely smoothly, the audio is fine, and if we put it into full screen now, there we go, no lag, and it's crisp quality. So that's enough of that for one day, and if we just exit out of there, by clicking exit, like so, and then we can go and watch some more TV. And we can even add these onto our favourites over on the left bar there. Our favourites. And we can select genres and channels. Revision 3, Channel 5 and even BBC. So that is really good. Now if we go onto movies, which is the next selection on the menu. In here we get a range of different movies as you see here. They're not all what I would watch personally, they're not the latest blockbusters, what you could say, not the latest stuff you'd find in the movies, a lot of them are quite old, outdated, but they are, there is some good classics in there, um, they're not all that good, but they do play nice and smoothly, they open up in open film, and you may even find sometimes that there is some advertisements, but what I like about this, it plays straight away, and you do have control over play, pause, etc. here, along the bottom, if we just skip it so far on, I will hit the play button there. And oh, tomorrow, there we go. It just took a slight few seconds there, there to load up. So that's a perfectly playing movie. Here we have channels, two channels, open film and movie. Um, and genres here. Where we can get all the different genres, fantasy, family, documentary. So watch some very boring but interesting maybe documentaries there. So that's the movies, it does include a whole range of free movies. And yes, this whole thing is free. It doesn't cost you anything unless you buy the boxy box. Yes, the boxy box, whatever. Anyway, now let's go into applications. Here, you'll get a whole range of applications. There's RSS feeds, the weather, Groove Shark for playing music, Flickr for viewing photos, Machinima there, CNET for your technology coverage, as well as the world of tech. Unfortunately, we don't have an app here. Crackle, video stuff, um, some radio stations, cooking channels, app TV. There is just a whole range of channels here and applications. One thing I would really like to say, see in this is actual games, some basic games which you could play on your TV with a remote. Possibly Angry Birds, but that may not be the most compatible with a remote. Maybe some others out there. And you can even get Twitter here. I've just spotted the Twitter logo there. Ah, yep, Twitter. You can get Twitter on here, and you can view all your Twitter feeds on your TV. Now that is pretty cool. So here is Twitter. Unfortunately, I don't have an account attached to it yet but I am going to soon put my account to it. Now let's move on to files. You can actually browse every file on your network. Every file. And you can categorize into movies you've got on your computer, and it automatically gets the pictures as well. It will automatically find the pictures, as you see Doctor Who and the Daleks here, it's found the picture for it. Titanic there, it's also found the picture for that. Then we can just hit back here. Oh, wrong one. Let's go back to files there, and we can categorize it into movie library, shows, etc. Oh, done that again. And we can even play music in this, so if we go down, let's have a look. 
see if I've got some music on here. Um, iTunes, iTunes Music, no local media, iTunes Media, Music, there we go. It was all in the wrong file, so then it will categorize all your music like so. As you see, there is a lot of it. If we go into Unknown Artist, you'll see some music here. And if we just hit the play button, like so, it will play your music. So the great thing about this, you can be browsing through all of your movies here, looking for a movie to watch while listening to music. Or you can be on Twitter with your Twitter feed going down while listening to music, or even on Facebook. So what I'm going to do now is by going to this menu here, which is the selection menu, there is a little play option which you can stop the music from. We just press pause like so. So the final option you have here is web. I was quite impressed with this, as this gives you the gateway to have internet on your television. So in here you can type whatever website you want, www.theworldoftech.net. Let's head over for some latest tech news and reviews. So it does normally load the page up pretty quickly, but let's see. There we go. It has loaded up the page and it is quite actually zoomed in a significant amount here. We may have to zoom out if we can, but it's loaded the full page and it's not quite displaying properly. So if we just head over to google.co.uk now and see if it will load that up. Ah, and here we are on Google. And I seem to be having a slight problem with getting the page to fit the screen, but I may have to alter some of them resolution, them resolution things over in the settings. So, this is Boxy. This is the desktop application you can get for Windows, you can get for Macintosh. And here is the final sleep exit logout, and this controls your computer. So I'm not going to do logout as I'm recording a video. And if we just go back to the home screen. So, this is Boxy. I really do like this, I think it's excellent, it's got great potential, and for me, it's certainly the best home media sharing centre out there for free on the web. If you want to download this, you can head over to boxy.tv. You can get this for iPad and stay tuned for the iPad review I will be conducting. And you can also get live TV on this with the Boxy dongle and you can also get the Boxy box. And with the Boxy box, you don't need a computer to get this on your television. So for more of the latest tech news and reviews, be sure to head over to theworldoftech.net. And until next time, I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.